Let's do this one. This, I got, this I got a feeling this is gonna be a good cider. Come join this Guy Fieri party. This is some <laughs> right here. All right, let's just uh, cut all that. <laughs> Portage perfection, witch. Porters perfection. Porters perfection. Wixen crab. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another tasting video here. Today we'll be going to the Pacific Northwest, trying some ciders out of Oregon and Washington. The gentleman to my right, you might notice, is a young uh, strapping gentleman that's not Paul Rash. Uh, Correct. Finally yeah. doing a video with somebody else, Nick. Yeah. But this is Nick Iverson, sorry. Uh, Nick, tell us about yourself. Sure, yeah, name's Nick. Perfect, sounds good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nick uh, recently just joined the company uh, from Chicago. Uh, heading up sales. Indeed, yeah. Iowa native, Cedar Falls, born and raised, but uh, fortunate enough to get this job here at Wilson's sales and distribution manager. Like Greg said, been in Chicago for the last 12 years selling beer for the likes of Goose Island and Lagunitas, perennial artisan ales based out of St. Louis as well. So yeah, full circle here, now in the Appledom of Iowa. Got that Paul Rash word, Appledom. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm go. starting to get inundated with yeah. the, the verbiage here, so. One thing that's gonna be fun, at least for me, uh, is to uh, show you some ciders, but you are a level one or two Cicerone. To be honest, I don't know how many levels there are anymore. Oh, okay. You know, I think there's four. You were a Cicerone before yeah. it was cool to be a Cicerone. I was, I yeah. think. <laughs> I don't even know if you call it cool anymore, but it's, it's yeah. definitely like really good training for, for those in the beverage industry. Um, I think technically it's a level two that I, I have. Cool, perfect. Well, we'll look forward to see what you got to say about this uh, yeah. these ciders, man. Yeah, sure, man, let's get into it. So uh, first up here, uh, normally, as we were just talking about before, I'd go a little bit drier to sweeter, but we're gonna go yeah. sweeter to then more nuanced. We got some fun ciders to, to finish this video up. But we are starting today uh, at uh, an entry level cider. Okay. Uh, what I would call, it's a semi-sweet from Schilling Cider, a major player in the game, especially with the Pacific Northwest. 5.2% um, ABV on this, uh, it's gonna, yeah, hit you up front with some sweetness, but but finish nice and tart. There's some interesting notes on the back end that I was a little bit shocked to see. Auburn, Washington, huh? Sure. Okay. <laughs> that's, where, <laughs> that's where these guys are at. They have two locations, at least storefront locations, in uh, Seattle and Portland. Um, when we're talking the easy drinking ciders um, out of the Northwest, you're going to get a lot of out of the base apples, usually Honeycrisp and Fuji. Those are two major players. Right. Um, they are claiming on this can, I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but they on the can say they're using... Uh, Bitter Sharps, I believe, in this one. Yep, Greg has a memory, didn't drink too much last night. That is a interesting looking color there. Yep, really nice color on it, honestly, compared to most ciders that live in this realm. Cheers. Cheers, man. Yeah. Hey, happy first here, video, here. buddy. Dude, thanks for having me. Yeah, that definitely leans sweet. Yep. <laughs> it certainly does. One thing you said right before we started shooting the video is like, these aren't gonna be sweet, are they? Yeah, Sorry. I mean, not, not like sweet in a bad way at all. But, uh, have rich yeah it's a rich sweetness i would classify that one as you a, could sort of like it, the the flavor profile for me is sort of matches the color yeah it's like a deep yeah rich it's yeah perfect, perfect description yeah color is is deep and rich and the, yeah. the flavor is sweet and, and rich and rich yeah, yeah. just a bunch of richness <laughs> yeah um, I, I could see myself drinking several of these if i was out in the mountains like this sasquatch uh, mm -hmm. i don't know maybe hiking of sorts yeah right i'm, I'm assuming auburn has a. Uh, of beautiful terrain. I've never been there, man. <laughs> yeah, we should go. <laughs> okay. But yeah, easy drinking. Like like I said, uh, entry level here. Perfect if you're wanting to mess around in the cider world. You know, I would compare this to our Honey Crisp that we do here. Just mm -hmm. sort of uh, well balanced, sweet, non offensive. How'd you go about getting these cans here? I mean, we're in Iowa, right? So yeah. Um, so Auburn, there's a Auburn's a long ways away. Yeah. So there's a <laughs> company out there called Vino Shipper. Okay. And so you just go to the website and you can order just like you're buying a, a merch shirt or whatever. Um, and hmm. it shows up at your door. And as long as you're 21, you're good to go. You know, this is a good cider, you yep. know, for a entry level, if you want to call it that. Exactly. Like, and that that's not a, you know, talking down on the cider at all. No. It, it is what it needs Quite to be. Quite tasty. You know? It almost pours like the color, like a beer. That's a dark color for mm -hmm. a cider. It, part of me honestly thinks like I went to oxidization. Oh, really? I was a little bit like, that is pretty damn dark, but hmm. I'm not getting any notes of that. And you usually can pick that up in, in like a stale 
Nope, no staleness on uh, on the palette. It's well carbonated. The uh, the finish is uh, different than our you know pedestrian entry level ciders. Yep. Yeast. You know what they're fermenting with. I'm not sure what they're fermenting with, but that could also be the bitter sharps come into play. Okay. Uh, don't know why this is here. They're adding citric acid after fermentation. Yeah. So there's some of the, that might be a little bit of it. Um, I wonder what their distribution network looks like. Maybe that has something to do with the uh, addition of that. I have no idea. Potentially. No idea. Just sales talk. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I don't know about you, man. I'm ready to dry it up a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go there. Yonder Cider here. They are out of uh, Seattle, Washington. This is a dry cider. They describe it as uh, hard to define on their website, which I may or may not have had a can of this before shooting today. Um, again, some people say I have a problem. We won't think about that. What do they mean by hard to define? Yeah, it's please. Uh, abstract cider. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually very interested not to not to set you up, but I'm very okay. interested to see see what you think. That has got an aroma to it, by golly gee. Ooh. Right? Porter's Perfection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's some of, the, yeah, some nice. of those. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to get uh, associated with apples. Yeah. Definitely some Porter's Perfection yeah. in this one. <laughs> so, so the base of this, uh, like most Pack Northwest, you got, like I mentioned the other one, you got your Fuji and your Honeycrisp, right? But then they're adding a little bit of uh, Golden Russet. But then you get this, this, this punch of acid um, so they're using three other apples in this, uh, as you called out with that that master talent and apple mind of yours, mm. uh, Porter's Perfection. Porter's Perfection. Um, Wix and Crab. That's that's I think where that punchy, um, are those fruity. The, are those the little? Yeah, little. Yeah, I believe I believe the Wixens are a little. The Hughes crabs are normally a little bit bigger. They mm -hmm. don't look very much like a crab album, but the Wixens I think are. So the Wixen crabs would have high acidity and taste. Acid acid level not not so much tannin on these on on crabs but they're very acidic mm, this is a very acidic mm -hmm. cider yeah it is but i think what i enjoy about it personally is is you can definitely execute this just by dumping malic acid in something mm, okay but they're they're executing this above my pay grade but okay. yeah <laughs> <laughs> sort of like the other one right so so anything if you're ever looking at a cider label anything that is added post fermentation um will be has to be labeled so that other cider we just tried had malic, malic acid listed and citric acid. That means after fermentation, when they're doing their blend, they're adding these acids in. And it gives a different profile, but you can also achieve something tart or something by your apple selection. I think this honestly, not to, not to not begrudge, um, a word that I can't think of right now. You know, I was expecting a much different uh, basic cider when I cracked this can open. You know? Sure, it's definitely not basic. No, it's, no, it finishes really dry. The aroma of it is, I mean, abrasive to me, in a in like a good way. You know, um, I like strong smelling beverages. Mm -hmm. Almost feel like it belongs at a a table with uh, food at a dining table. Yep. You know, with a dry finish like this, you do a lot of uh, a lot of real good things. You should give one of these cans to Chef Matt. Yeah. So I actually I see what he has to say about it. Cans, yeah, because that Wixen crab would probably yeah. set him into a creative spiral. <laughs> really cool looking cans too, man. I really, really like this. Good looking product. Tastes great. I would drink a couple of these over the course of like a a big dinner. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Let's do this one. This, I got, this could I got be a fun. feeling. I can see. Yeah. Through the brown glass, because that light is so freaking bright, this is gonna be a good cider. That is not a transparent beverage. Correct. That has got some things in there yeah. that belong in my belly. Yeah. So, so uh, I never, never honestly heard of, we're just rolling, right? We're just, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> like this, this is just, okay. never heard of this company before. Before what starting, is it? Before starting this project. Stone Circle. Stone Circle. From Estacada, Oregon? I just really Tom sounded like a Midwestern <laughs> boy right there. Estacada. Yes, Estacada. Yes, Farmhouse Dry here. Uh, this should play more like a scrumpy, more like a UK Love style me cider. Some scrumpy man. Uh, they don't list the apple varieties on this one, at least on the the, the website where I do my research. Cool. Uh, but twelve varieties in here, left unfiltered, as as you were talking about. Yeah, we got the backlighting shining right at us here, and I can see through the bottle. It is not 
transparent. It's always up to whatever you'd like to do. If you like your uh, ciders a little more clear, but if there's a unfiltered product in a bottle, more often than not, you're gonna get some sediment, especially if it's- Is that what you were bad. just doing? Exactly. Were you rousing the yeast? Rousing the yeast, buddy. Mm. If you don't like the yeasty character, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but you and I sort of like the yeasty, yes. yeasty goodness. Yes. So rouse that yeast, buddy. Getting that up in suspension, that's gonna add a lot more uh, depth. Of cool. Flavor, potentially, and, and it also might explode. We don't know. We I'm don't excited. Know. I have a- yeah. uh, I have an optimistic outlook about this one. Oh, it's it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna rousing. Make, it's gonna make for a good. Oh, it's rousing. Ooh, nice. Boom. Lovely. May I? Please. I'm excited to try this one. It's a heavy bottle. Ooh. Yeah, that is a. That is a color thick, on that. Thick cider. <laughs> cheers, man. This is. Yeah, uh, cheers. Let's let's uh, let's have fun with this one. Oh boy, that's got a lot going on. That's a. Uh, that's a whole lot of uh, stone fruits, if you will. I'm getting some pear, I'm getting some peaches, mm -hmm. and maybe an apricot or two. Oh boy, that's got a lot of yeast in it. Yeah, it's got a lot. I haven't even tasted it. Where Get you, in there, man. Where are you at right now? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm yeah. guy, as you say, Guy Fieri in Flavor Town. Flavor Town right, right now. now. Mm. Oh, man. There's something. Again, just like last video with Paul, this might not be the best cider if you are just uh, going from, say, bush light and wanting to jump into cider. <laughs> this, oh, no, definitely not. This has, there's a lot more going on from when you're doing these farmhouse style fermentations. Oh, boy. You're getting a, a much broader, uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's about sort of bacterial cultures going on. That's there. what I was gonna say. This is, it says farmhouse dry yeah. on the bottom here, right? That's what mm -hmm. they're, they're calling the, the style or is that the actual name of the cider? It's their, it's their farmhouse dry. There's more farmhouse going on in here than there is dryness. Yeah. And I, I, I dig that. Yeah. I like that quite a bit. This is, um, again, kind of like yonder, but in a completely more complex way. You could do a ton of things with this at a dining table. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Break this bottle open and share it with multiple people. Maybe over a charcuterie plate with some cured meats and fine yeah. cheeses if yeah. you're into that kind of thing. Maybe Even some, get some, some pickled stuff. Mm -hmm. Or, or even like like just fruit. I mean, that's just, we just basically listed out a charcuterie. I don't know, if you wanna like, get crazy, you yeah. go do like a marmalade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You can go crazy with it. Yeah. Marmalade, Dude, you know thank you for purchasing this cider. This is delicious. Yeah. This is um, right up my alley. Mind me asking how much you paid for this one? <laughs> I didn't pay anything, uh, Paul, Paul bought it. <laughs> Shout out to Paul, yeah. thanks, no, for that. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. You know, quite honest, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I would assume um, I mean, I would be willing, and, and I'm in a realm of enjoying ciders like this, or I, I've you know been making cider for seven years now. Side note. What's up? Today marks the seven year anniversary where I started my cider adventure. Where South left, City? Where I left architecture and, uh, and uh, started the whole cider thing. So. Well, I'm righteous, man. Thanks yeah. for having me here to <laughs> yeah, celebrate. <cheers. laughs> But yeah, I've been making cider now for seven years, and, and with that, like my pal, I've tried a lot, and, and and this is where I'm at. So I'm willing to drop. I mean, I would easily pay 18 bucks for something that tastes. You know, good. I would be really disappointed if they decided to package this cider in like a 500 milliliter bottle. I want as much as this as humanly possible, a large vessel. Yeah, I feel you. You know, you know one thing to note. Uh, when we're talking farmhouse or something sort of listing themselves as a farmhouse, in my experience, it's one of two things. One, they intentionally set out to do, say, a spontaneously fermented beverage, or they messed up their fermentation. I would expect or suspect that this was an intentional spontaneous ferment. So very similar to sort of our wild ferment series. So what, you, what you're getting there with all this complexity and flavor is, is, as I just mentioned a few moments ago, this bacterial competition. And it, lambic is the perfect example in the beer world. Sure, right? sure. You're, you're having these curves, so so you're creating, uh, or you have a liquid that is an environment where bacteria and yeast want to live and want to grow. This has several different uh, bacteria. Yeah, uh, as you just li were saying, living in it. Yeah. yeah, the like there's a bit of there's a bit of nail polish remover, but like right. in in a good way. I mean, you brought up my Cicerone, yeah. right? Yeah. Which was like very helpful at the, at the point in my life in terms of like uh, learning about beer and, and such off flavors, right? So acetylaldehyde being a, a, one of the main off flavors in beer, yeah. at least that Cicerone program would, uh, you know, trained us on. And uh, it's present in here, but at a very low level. And it's, a, it's almost like a complimentary 
flavor that cuts through some of the, the more juicy, uh, fruity flavors to it. And, and fruity leaning towards uh, like pitted fruits, like a yeah. peach, an, an apricot. Um, I, I, there's, the mouth there's, feels substantial here. This is like a coating the entire There's a lot of palette. tannin um, going on here. And with that brings those phenols. So they, they, there's... That's what I was looking for. Like, Thank like, you. Like leather. It is very fun. phenolic. Yeah. There's, and, and, and so generally you have your phenolics and your, your esters and phenols. Right? Yeah. Esters are going to be your fruity notes and all these light high-end things is the way I like to think about it. And your phenols come in with the low notes. Yeah. It's got both of those going yeah. on. They're yeah. dancing together quite well. But yeah. So, so just to real, really quickly close up the, the note here on, on the, the farmhouse, as, as I uh, just, you know, we, we ended on bacterial competition. Yeah. The bacteria and yeasts and, and different microbes. microbes is exactly what microbes. I was looking for. Microbes. And they're creating an environment um, that will eventually, they will not be able to survive in. Yeast, uh, oftentimes, most Saccharomyces strains will die after around 15% ABV. Yeah, thanks for bringing um, up the sac. Yeah, there's some Saccharomyces. There's a lot of stuff in here. I, I mean, we have shared uh, quite a bit of this cider with uh, Alexander behind the camera here, just in the hopes to getting to the bottom of the bottle because there's drags. Um, I, want, I want the drags here. Let me take the rest of the... The body, I'll, I'll take the drags. I don't know if I really want to move on to the next one, but I can tell you I'm even more excited about the next one we have coming up. Okay. that's um, a, You just set a high bar here with this. Yeah. This one's fantastic, dude. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rut row. All right, lastly here, we have Finn River. I'm pretty excited about this one. Likewise. There's a few different things going on here. Uh, mainly the, the base of this cider is going to be a golden russet. The name of the cider, I should say, is... Uh, Heart of Gold by Finn River. But I have not, I, I maybe I've had this before in terms of, of what they're trying to do with this bottle, but they took three. May I? Please, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm just going to sit here and tell No, you, you talk. I'll, um, I'll get this thing going. There's many different varieties of apples in this, but again, the main one being Golden Russet. But they did three separate fermentations. It's a 9% alcohol. Yep, That's 9%. Heater. Three separate fermentations, then blended those fermentations together. To, to execute a, a, a cider, uh, hopefully a well-balanced cider, uh, aged for eight months um, after it was blended back together. Cheers, man. Cheers. So they, Thanks this, for sharing these. Cheers, no worries, man. So they have an orchard series, so this is taking sort of their golden russet from the orchard series and then doing more with it. Oh, boy. Was that a good old boy? Oh, or? yeah, that's a complete different cider than the uh, what, Stone Creek mm. that we just had. Circle. Circle. Stone, Stone circle. circle. I'm so sorry. Wow. Yeah, that's something special. High uh, high carb levels here. It's yep, Champenois style. I, they, I would assume we're just with the cork and cage, they're, right. they're doing bottle, uh, carbonating bottle. Uh, champ, Champenois style. Trying to put my finger on that aroma. Ooh. Can't uh, exactly nail that down quite yet. Very grapey. Yeah. Yeah. It's got some, some white, white grape characteristics to it. Makes me think that maybe they sat the... Uh, cider on some white oak. It's also a beautiful label. This feels like a very expensive bottle of wine when you hold mm -hmm. it. They recommend this as a great, uh, if you're not in the mood for champagne but want something to celebrate something in a nice uh, fluted glass, uh, sure. pick up this bottle. Fluted glass? <laughs> it's a flute. It's a flute. <laughs> you can flute a glass. Yeah, sure. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is a very interesting uh, cider compared to mm -hmm. what was just thrown at us there by a lot cleaner stuff. like there, there's a Absolutely. lot more high notes I would say yeah it's bringing everything up where compare the mouthfeel of of this to the stone circle which was just completely you know the entire entire mouth almost like juicy and salivating right it kind of makes you makes you drool a little bit which sounds awful. I mean this has <laughs> this is more like you know, bright and crisp. Yeah, and to play off the the whole wine thing. And granted, you know, anything with alcohol can have legs. Uh, cider certainly can have legs. I honestly didn't stir or uh, swirl the stone circle around, but we we definitely have. You know, there are legs present on this. This would be like a before dinner, right? Yeah, I would. I this would this would be very much crack it open. Amuse um, amuse bouche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the the high, I mean, it's it's very true. The the higher the carbonation, those those high carb levels are going to excite your palate, get you ready for the meal. It's that's that's certainly a thing. This is, again, um, 
they even recommend it. It's just something to celebrate. And I would definitely open a meal with this. I'm really curious about what's going on at Finn River here. Uh, is this their, is this like a, a series, a high-end series, obviously, or is this like all that they do? They mainly live, in my opinion, I guess, uh, they live in the realm of, of more high-end. They are... Central Valley. Produced and bottled. <laughs> Central Valley. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sorry, I'm reading the label. Yeah. Produced and bottled by Central Valley Orchards, LLC. Contains sulfites, obviously. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I agree, you know, the science would prove that it is sort of fundamental. If you're, if you're trying to do something that is clean, crisp, um, you need to make sure you are fighting off any oxygen borne pathogens that, ba basically, it's malactic fermentation is what we're all worried about. Well, that would make sense adding sulfites when they're doing a cork and cage. Yep. Mm -hmm. They mainly produce, I, I, I'm not too, I, I don't have too much exposure. When I was on the uh, West Coast, I, I had a few of theirs, but they live in the realm, I would say that uh, from our, our specialty series, so the uh, recently released Kvike, shameless plug, you know, Wild Firm, Oak Age, Rosé, and on up for our, for our future programs. Totally, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's a bright cider. It's very champagne like. I'm feeling all nine percent of the of the alcohol content. It's a uh, it's not hot as they say, but it is it's substantial as uh, you continue to sip on it. So I mean, yeah, this this c compared to the Stone Circle, it's it's hitting on different notes, right? The Stone Circle is deep, moody for me personally. Moody, right? yeah, sure. That's this is hitting on on a bunch of you know white wine, high note levels, uh, decent acidity, real nice high carbonation. Sure, it's a, it's an excellent cider. I mean, it's it's um, certainly for for celebration. I don't think it's fair to compare the Stone Circle with this Finn River because they're in two completely yeah. different no, that's, two that's completely different realms. Absolutely right. This is a fantastic cider that I have more questions that I would like to ask You know, the, the producers yeah. of this uh, fine beverage about compared to the Stone Circle where I, I've, I've had similar type of flavors. Absolutely. Even in beer, yep. right? Farmhouse style mm -hmm. uh, beers. What this is aged on would be my first question, right? Like oak, I'm assuming. But possibly. I'm, I'm assuming oak. Well, there, you, there's you, like a citrus element to this yeah. that lends grapefruit, yeah. right? Maybe like a rind, yeah. if you will, mm -hmm. a, a grapefruit rind. I mean, you can rest it. Like if you just want to mellow your acids, like you can just rest it on stainless. The, the thing that fascinates, right. about, uh, uh, fascinates me about the cider is, is the actual fermentation having three separate fermentations with three separate yeasts and then bringing that all together to create mm -hmm. to create a, a cider like this. Sure. You know, the Golden Russet is a fairly sharp apple, in my experience. This does have a very sharp flavor. So I wonder if that eight months that they rested with is just to sort of take that edge off. I think the, the most important thing about ciders like this, or just beverages, generally speaking, when you have flavors this unique, it's a time and place situation mm -hmm. to drink this. You don't Absolutely. just like, oh yeah, I you know find someone that says, oh, I, I like apple cider, yeah. and then yeah. give them this, they'll be blown away or just like awfully confused by it um, in, in a good way, hopefully. This is this is like a situational yeah. drink, and but more than anything, I like to eat. And I would take this straight to you know a dining experience, yeah. just like the Stone Circle. But they they play in different realms flavor wise. Yeah. The carbonation level on this is is um, very prosecco and champagne like. Mm -hmm. So you know start your dinner with this. You you touched on something there a little bit that that uh, you know it excites me as a producer. Mm -hmm. American cider is so much more than uh, what is broadly available. Sure. Right, and and you could make the argument that it might be doing a dis disservice to the overall cider industry. So products like this that that I've never had before, and and you know I've been drinking cider for a while. Uh, we'll say I was 21 when I had my first cider. That 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 you're just like wow, this is an amazing wine esque cider. Something that that would Absolutely. pair well with wine. Uh -huh. The the farmhouse over there. I mean, even some of the products we had earlier today, or, or that we had in other videos. It's mm -hmm. Cider can be so much more than just like sweet and crushable. Yeah. You know, right. and and when executed properly, just showing off fermentation capacities, fruit selection, all that, not hiding behind, 
you know, adjuncts and whatnot. Sure. Um, and I've made plenty of ciders with adjuncts. I'm not trying to hate on. There's a time and place. Not for everything. calling the kettle yeah. black. It's, time, time and know, place for everything. But supplying for the demand. Yeah. Right. We are a uh, a for profit company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are not a final one. Yeah, the diversification of of production. Yeah. I, I think that's what you're getting at. Yeah, and and just more like it's 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 fun to sit down and be surprised, even being this long in the game, of that of what cider can be. Um, and and honestly, from my point of view, and, and I think you're along for the ride here at Wilson's is what we can do in the future for for the Iowa cider market. Nick, thanks for joining me, man. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, we, we went, I don't, I don't even know if Alexander's going to add any of that in there. I, I don't know. I, that's the fun thing about this. Who knows what the video is going to look like. That's one, all <laughs> one take. I'm totally not worthy to be here, but thanks for having me. <laughs> I should probably be out like selling stuff, but well, you uh, know, you know, that'd be nice. Yeah. It's Friday. It's been a long week. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good to end the week with some, some fine ciders and absolutely man. And, and shout out to, uh, all of those cider companies. Absolutely. I, um, I can't say that I, I disliked any of those. They were all so distinctly different. And uh, support your local cider companies uh, in Iowa or otherwise. Um, Vino Shipper, check out their websites. And we got a couple more of these planned out. Uh, we will be doing um, sort of the Northeast and the South uh, with a couple other people in the company, at least that we have planned. Um, I might just try to convince Alexander to like come to bars with me and watch me drink Fernet, but you know, <laughs> we'll see how that works out. But. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.